Hey, what's up folks, and welcome back to another Laravel Lair tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna take a look at this week's project and show you some new things that I think are interesting. So let's jump into it. So this is the latest project, definitely check it out. I got a learn guide and a little YouTube video on the project. Check them out, it's, links are in the description. Uh, so in this tutorial, I wanted to take a look at how I add screws in a, somewhat of a different workflow for adding screws to your designs. Um, typically, I, I, I don't use so many screws, but more and more I'm finding myself having at least a dozen screws. And typically what I do is I, I would use joints to assign them to positions. Um, however though, if you have dozens of screws, you're gonna end up with dozens of joints. And if you have a bunch of joints, it could be hard to filter through them if you don't name them. Uh, so I tried to look for a different workflow on um, one way to reduce uh, the amount of joints and really to kind of keep my timeline nice and tidy looking for a different workflow for adding screws. So here's what I came up with. So let's go ahead and jump into uh, where I'm going to add the screws to this design. Uh, so I'm just gonna hide some stuff and get to it. Uh, one of the ways I like to hide things is um, you can actually just uh, do a shift select to select multiple components in your browser and then using the V key I can hide and even show them. So that's how I'm doing that. And I'm just gonna hide everything and reveal what I want. So I got my electronics uh, folder and I got a PCB mount, and this is what I want to work with. I already got some screws here, um, but I still need to add some more screws on top of the feather here to kind of secure the feather uh, down to these, these standoffs. So let's kind of jump into it. I'm going to go into my, I'm going to open my electronics uh, component, and then here you can see that I have something called feather hardware, and that includes the standoffs and the screws. And I think it's really useful to kind of have a separate um, kind of component folder uh, for housing all of your screws um, that are kind of uh, particular to that uh, either assembly or PCB in this case. So I'm going to add my screws into here. I already have the screws here, so I'm going to grab them from McMaster Car. I tend to use them a lot. Uh, the McMaster Car thing is under the insert. There's a McMaster Car button there. I use it so much so that I added it to my design shortcuts. And the way to do that is you can just type in Mick. There's the McMaster um, item, and you can add it by using this icon. Right now it's an X because I already have it. So I'm gonna click on that, bring this up. <clears throat> it's gonna be an M25 screw, so let me click on screws. Uh, it's a metric, M25. And then the length is gonna be four millimeters. It's rather short. And I'm just gonna bypass the head type, the drive type, and go straight to the material and hit plastic. That way I can get right to it. So you got a white one, a black one. I'll select the black one. And then uh, product detail. You can get a good look at the, the details, threads, sizes, and it's all good. Normally when I'm importing from McMaster Card the first time, it, uh, by, it defaults to SolidWorks, so just make sure it's a step file, right? And hit save. If you're just gonna bring that in, and if you look, um, you can kind of move it, but I, I, I tend to not move it because every time I move it, Fusion's like, hey, do you wanna capture the position? And we're going to capture the position, but I'm gonna save that for a little bit later. So let me just hit uh, OK. And then you can see here I have a capture position. I did move it, so I'm gonna hit revert. So there you go, no capture position was captured yet. No positions were captured. In the browser, I have the name of the screw here. It's the, the ID number <clears throat> for McMaster Car. You can leave that there if you'd like, but I like to change it. So I'm gonna name it M25 by four millimeters because they're a little bit shorter. So now I need to make uh, four copies of this guy, or however many copies. If you need to make more than one copy, uh, the rectangular pattern is a great way to do it. So I'll have it selected here in the browser, bring up my design shortcuts, type in rect, and then there is the uh, rectangle pattern. Uh, it's already set to components because I had it selected, and then I'll select the direction. It can be whichever way you like. I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna go spread this out. For the quantity, I need four, so I'll update that. Then I'll hit OK. Those are my four screws. You can see here that they're named uh, nicely. And now I need to start thinking, OK, so how, where am I going to put these screws? They need to be on top of the feather here. And instead of using a joint, I'm going to use the Align tool. So let me activate the whole component so I can see everything. right? So I'm in the active component. I get my whole timeline here. Let me go to the very end of the timeline because it's there, there I am. You can see I brought in my screw. I did a rectangle pattern. The next thing I'm going to do is do aligns. So the align is normally under the modify drop down. There it is, align. You can add it to your toolbar here or your design shortcuts, which I have done here. You can just search for it by hitting, by searching for align. And there it is. So I'm going to hit align. 
So it's uh, the object is set to components. You could do bodies also, just so you know. Uh, I'm going to start with selecting uh, the bottom surface, but the edge, and you see when I select the edge, I get that little uh, icon that lets me know it's, it's going to snap to the center. So I click on that, and now I need to pick where I want it to go. So I want it to go on top of these mounting holes. You could pick any circle, but I'm going to select this mounting hole, sort of the edge there, click on that, and you'll see that it did it right away. That's really nice, because normally when you try to do it with a joint, it takes a little bit, it has to animate, right? Uh, you got this little floaty flip. I do need to flip it, so I'm going to click on that. Or you could click over here to, to, to flip that. Um, so that's nice. There is a capture position checkbox. I'm not going to select that just yet. I want to I want to align all the screws before I capture the position. So I hit OK. So let's kind of run through that again. Um, I'll bring up my uh, design shortcuts, select a line, and then select uh, the screw itself, the little bottom outer edge here of the screw. Now I'm going to select the mounting hole. Again, making sure that I'm kind of looking at where I want it to snap because I could actually snap it to the wrong spot. So just make sure you snap it where you want. Uh, flip it if you need, and then hit OK. And then let's do the other two. So again, align, select. Let's drop it here. Flip, hit OK. And let's do it one more time. Align, select your screw, and then select your mounting hole. And then we'll flip it at the end here. Flip. You know, now that we're here, we might as well hit Capture Position and then hit OK. And that will actually append that in here, right? So now I got three things in my timeline now instead of like four. <laughs> so I got uh, the base feature, um, the pattern, and then um, the Capture Position. So that's cool. Now, one of the things, though, is if I start to move this, you'll see that they're not kind of grouped yet. They're not moving along with this. Uh, and that's because. Uh, a line doesn't really uh, create a relationship where it says I'm going to be grouped to you. So guess what we can use to group it? A rigid group. So I'm going to bring that up in my um, tool, uh, my design sketch toolbox, and I'll click that. And it says, what components would you like? So they have to be components. So instead of selecting each individual screw, I'm just going to select the feather hardware component because that is kind of contains all the things that I want to group. So I want to group it to, well, the feather. It says, do you want to continue? I said, OK. And then I can hit OK again. And now I have a fourth thing added to my timeline, which is a rigid group. So you can see here, I have, uh, now if I start to move this, everything is grouped because I told it to, which is really nice. And I can uh, revert that capture position. Uh, but if I ever need to go back in here, I can double click on the capture position. And you have the option to move or align things. You can still move things around and hit finish position. Uh, so typically, what I would suggest though is doing that with more than just four screws. You can see here I have I have six of them. Uh, so if I were to do this again, I would have uh, done these eight screws and have would have only four things in my timeline, maybe five. Uh, so that's uh, I think that's a better workflow because um, if you're adding a ton a ton of screws, then you're just going to add a bunch of uh, joints to your timeline, and then you're going to have a bunch of joints uh, in here. And for right now, I only have two joints. I have uh, the feather, which I should name it feather, and then the switch, which I should name it switch. Sorry, click something else. Rename that to switch. So that way I know what that joint actually is. And these are just uh, rigid body joints. Uh, there's nothing special to them. They're just rigid bodies. There's not real motion to them because they're rigid. Um, so that's cool. Um, yeah, so I got that. And that's pretty much it. I, I'm curious to see how other folks are uh, adding a whole bunch of screws to their designs. Um, you know what I should have mentioned is if we go to that original screw here, right here, and you can see here that if we open that group, there's just two things. It's a component and then a, a, a base feature. You can double click the base feature and you can modify the screw. And why would you want to modify the screw? Well, if you have a ton of screws and they all have threads, that can tend to slow down your uh, your machine. So what I'm going to do is delete these uh, threads from the screw. So I'll just select this surface. And then let's select the bottom surface of that. And then just hit the Delete key. I'm in the Base Edit feature, the Base feature solid. By I just double clicked on that feature and I'm in it. right? So now that I deleted it, let me make sure that my um, my screw is actually the correct dimension. The radius is 1.25, which means the diameter is 2.5. Perfect. Another thing I like to remove is the chamfer. I don't really need that. This is the extra detail. The more geometry you have, the more kind of slower it's going to be. Uh, so once I finish this 
feature. Um, the rest of the screws will also update because they're just copies of this one screw. So I'll hit OK. Everything gets back to normal. Let me reorient myself. And now I have a little bit speedier. If I had, again, a dozen or three dozen or maybe four dozen screws, uh, that would dramatically uh, reduce, I think, uh, the, uh, the processing of my machine. So there you go. That is how I add screws now for uh, moving forward, I think, uh, to my designs. Let me guys know what you think. Is this how you add screws? Is there a different way, a more optimized way to add screws? Let me know. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Also, don't forget to uh, check out this project. It's a really fun one. I actually have it right outside my door so folks know that I am, well, doing a thing here. All right. Thank you guys so much. Stay creative and stay safe out there. I'll see you guys in the next one. But until then, remember to make a great day. Bye, folks.